Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and throughout 2017, I've had the privilege of being the president of the North American Menopause Society, and I'm joined here by Dr. Nick Panay. Tell Hello. everybody who you are. My name is Nick Panay. I'm uh, an obstetrician gynecologist from uh, London. I'm uh, General Secretary-elect of the International Menopause Society, and I'm delighted to be here at the International Menopause Society represent as the International Menopause Society representative of NAMS. Well, we're excited to have you. So. Let's talk about vulvovaginal atrophy, now called genital urinary syndrome of menopause. Our research, whether it's Canada or the United States, really shows that only 7% of women are actually treated. Yet we know that all women will have this issue, some with distress, some not with distress, but even those with distress don't get treated. Why is that? I think this is a, a problem. Um, it's a very underreported uh, and undertreated area. I think it's been a taboo subject for too long. Women are too reluctant to come forward to complain about the problems. And I think health healthcare physicians um, are reluctant to engage in the conversation about it for fear of entering into complex discussions uh, and going into areas where perhaps they feel uncomfortable about it sort as well. A, a Pandora's box, you're not going to be able to get onto your next patient, if you will. Precisely. So let's talk about patients who are self-medicating first. Um, lotions, moisturizers, usually don't talk to their physicians. Often physicians don't even have a lot of information about the difference between a moisturizer or a lubricant. So enlighten us. Moisturizers and lubricants, I believe, play an important role. But not uh, all are exactly the same. They perform in different ways. And the, the reason there is a difference in performance is because uh, they have different constituents. Some have uh, different concentrations, some have different pH, and we know that if the concentration of the lubricant or moisturizer is too high, then this can lead to irritation of the vagina, uh, and we know if the pH is, uh, is too high, then this could subject the vagina, again, to irritation and also to uh, risk of infection. So, you know, how is a person to know? Well, I think we need better regulation in this area. I think we need to have the constituents of the lubricants and moisturizers uh, clearly displayed on the box. I think there need to be standards set, uh, and at the moment there aren't standards set in this area. Um, and I think we need to educate uh, healthcare physicians and also uh, women to, to be able to know which are the optimum products and which could potentially could cause more trouble uh, than actually benefit. So when it comes to moisturizers, just the frequency of use different than lubricants? Um, so moisturizers rehydrate the vaginal tissues and they can be used daily. Um, and um, they're very important, I think, to maintain the health and the, uh, the elasticity of the, the vaginal tissue. Lubricants can be used in preparation for intercourse and at the time of intercourse. Uh, as a top-up to moisturizers, so the two can be mutually beneficial. And in terms of the, the ingredient that you look for in a moisturizer, anything that you are more, this is what I'm looking for? Not so much the ingredient. Um, I mean, some are water-based, some are oil-based, uh, some are, uh, have glycerin, um, and some have additives. And I think the important thing really is to make sure that uh, it's uh, as physiological and as natural uh, a representation of the natural vaginal secretions. So I think additives, for instance, such as parabens, mm -hmm. such as uh, glycerol, uh, and not needed. Uh, are, are not needed not uh, because they can potentially lead to more problems in terms of vaginal irritation uh, and also alter the pH. Okay, so you talked about elasticity, um, but certainly moisturizers, although they, they do help the environment, are not going to give us back the changes that happen as we get more remote with estrogen loss. So let's be clear about this. I think estrogen should be the primary treatment for these sort of problems uh, because they uh, return the physiology of the vagina back to normal. There is an improvement in blood flow and thickening of the vaginal mucosa uh, and also uh, a return of uh, collagen and improved elasticity. But uh, moisturizers can help to mm -hmm. a certain extent um, and will only really benefit the, the user during uh, their actual usage, whereas with, with estrogen you see a return to natural physiology um, and that the effects are probably longer lasting. So now we have in the United States something new on the market, Prasterone, DHEA. Um, the difference, the need for it, your viewpoint? 
I think women should have choice. Um, and I think Pasteurin gives them another option uh, for uh, improving symptoms of vaginal atrophy and genital urinary syndrome of menopause. Um, it's uh, an androgenic uh, precursor, which is derived from the adrenal glands. Uh, it is converted to estrogen and testosterone locally. There isn't any significant systemic absorption. And the hope is that this can minimize the potential concerns that there might be about use of a hormonal preparation. Um, there are some women that have concerns about using estrogen, and they may, may find this a more acceptable option. And in terms of testosterone blood levels or estrogen blood levels, once they're converted, where do they go? So the action of uh, prosterone is primarily local, and therefore um, there is very little impact systemically. Um, it, it's, it's primarily within the local tissues. And for women who have issues of recurrent urinary tract infections, will there be a difference in offering something like a vaginal estrogen as opposed to DHEA? I think uh, urinary tract infections um, are a very uh, underestimated problem uh, in the postmenopausal woman. And um, often you see women being treated with repeated courses of antibiotics. And my right. view is that uh, the primary treatment for these women should be either with estrogen or a, uh, a substitute for estrogen which is actually effective for these symptoms. Um, and um, this is highly efficacious and prevents the need for recurrent investigations and uh, recurrent use of antibiotics. If a woman has waited a long period of time and has quite thin changes, atrophic changes in the vaginal area, and you're now putting her on whatever preparation that you're putting her on, um, is there a rule for using moisturizers during that period of time as well? Absolutely. There may well be a synergistic effect between using estrogen and using a moisturizer or a lubricant. Um, and certainly within the first six to 12 weeks, whilst the physiology of the vagina is being returned to normal, I think uh, uh, use of a moisturizer and a lubricant uh, is uh, almost uh, essential, I mm -hmm. would say, in order to um, facilitate the, the, the optimization of treatment longer term. Thank you so much. Thank you.